All right, here I have this Omfarl, O-M-M-F-A-R-L. It's a 100 amp uh, power supply. If you look it up on Amazon, it's uh, listed as a RV converter. The model number is PM3-100 LK. So I've had very good luck with this power supply. And uh, just to be quite honest, if you're buying one of these, type of power supplies, save your money and get the 75 amp version because this 100 amp version is just a little bit stronger than the 75 amp version. So just trust me, <laughs> do yourself a favor, buy the 75 amp version. But we've got a 100 amp uh, power supply uh, here and uh, the Tower Amps 100 amp smart charger. We've got both of them connected uh, well, let me back up. We've got both of them set on this voltmeter here. 14.54 uh, volts. That's the highest that this Tower Amps smart charger will go. It, it is the 14.4 volt setting, but it's reading 14.54 volts on this meter here. And I set this one. This one is uh, continuously variable, which means, you know, it's got a potentiometer and you can adjust it with a screwdriver. So I've got this one set identical to this one as far as an unloaded scenario with no cap bank or battery bank hooked up to it. Both of these register 14.54 volts DC. All right, so now I've got these cap banks drained down to roughly 10 volts. And I'm gonna show you, I've got clamp meter number two. So we're gonna turn it on. I'm gonna hit clamp meter number two on this little eight inch tablet these are Bluetooth. All right, so let's measure the voltage on both banks, both banks of caps. Here's the one that's on the, the RV power supply, 10.01 volts, and here's the one on the tower amps, 9.98 volts. So, you know, we're within 30 millivolts. All right, so I've got the Amfarl plugged in. So let's uh, let's stab our wires so we can see the voltage. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have a little test, a little comparison. And I'm going to back this up here on the screen. We're going to have this meter, meter number one, on the 600 amp setting. And it's going to measure the amperage. Now you can see it's showing negative 1.3 amperes. I'm going to hit the relativity button, which is like a tear button. And now it's on zero amps. So now it's going to measure the true amperage coming out of this power supply into that cap bank. And both of these cap banks are identical. They are the excess power 2.7 volt, uh, 3000 farad capacitors, super capacitors. So each bank is six cells in series, and that reduces the capacity down from 3,000 down to 500 farads of capacitance per bank. So they're identical banks, pretty much identical voltages. So let's see what I'm going to do. All right, so I've got the tower amps set to full power. This is like the third time I've tried this video. I think I've got it right this time. Let's find out. I've got it set to full power at 14.4 volt setting. So, fingers crossed, it works out good this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this uh, switch on, which is gonna activate this power supply. And when I see amperage starting here, then I'm going to, uh, start the timer on this phone all right here we go and when we i'm going to stop it when the voltage 
hits uh, the set point, which is 14.54. All right, so 24 seconds, 24 seconds. All right, so now let's not make any mistakes. So I need to switch the probes over. First off, I need to turn that off. All right, so I'm gonna uh, switch the probes over. Now we're at 9.97 volts. And now I'm going to put this one on the negative lead, just like I had it on the other one. And I'm going to hit the relative button to zero it out. I've got to plug it in. I'm going to plug it in on the same outlet. <clears throat> we'll reset this. So it's 24 seconds that it took to charge that cap bank. 24 seconds. And it was like 90 whatever 91 amps of current whatever it was not 100 amps of current it was in the 90s i have to go back and look and get exact numbers all right so now let's uh try this tar amps Hundred and seventeen, hundred sixteen. So well over a hundred amps current from the tar amps. And it's maintaining it too. Definitely maintaining it. Eighteen call it nineteen seconds. Nineteen seconds. All right, <clears throat> now. Let me turn these off. 14.54 volts. That was the set point. All right, so let's turn these off. So, this one, see that one was what, 24 seconds? This one's 19 seconds. So this one was about five seconds faster charging the cap bank because it's throwing out more current. Now, what's impressive to me is it did not fry. That one did not fry. I've had very good success with, with that, this power supply here. Um, so, and, and I will say I have had several digital designs, 100 amp power supplies, and they fried charging cap banks. And, I, and, and also the power base versions of the same power supply. And I think Massive Audio has one too. I have not tried the Massive Audio ones, but they look identical to the other ones, just in a, a different shell. But the, the digital designs, 100 amp power supplies are garbage. The power base uh, 100 amp power supplies are garbage. They do not have any kind of protection circuitry in them whatsoever. If I would have hooked one of them up to these cat banks, they would have fried. Boom. Fried. Gone. Plus, they're about two to three times more expensive than either one of these units. So, yes, I'm impressed with this one. Yes, I'm going to go with the, the Tower Amps Smart Charger. Uh on my wall up here on, on my test bench to charge that bank of caps keep it at 14.4 volts or 14.5 volts for amp testing purposes now in vehicles i would not use this one simply because if i'm using a power supply like in a burp vehicle and we have a couple of them out there using these power supplies the reason to use them in the vehicles is to increase the voltage so, I mean, you, you can buy an alternator and an aftermarket regulator or an external regulator to increase the voltage. And that's a good way to go. Don't get me wrong. That's a really good way to go. But on some of these vehicles, man, it just, it's, it is a whole lot easier and a whole lot more cost effective to use one of these power supplies to increase your voltage 
into your battery bank. And this is on a burp vehicle. Now, musical vehicles, I don't really suggest using a power supply. Um, I mean, you could, but it's just not going to give you enough juice to justify the, the cost. Um, because you don't just use a power supply. Well, now, if you're just sitting in a parking lot and you have an extension cord and, you know, you have... Uh, access to an outlet then okay you don't have to buy any additional uh, equipment but to run something like this in a vehicle standalone then you have to buy uh, a power inverter and then you have to that's big enough to run one of these power supplies and then you have to buy the battery bank to run the power inverter so you know it's kind of a a, a catch-22 there a double-edged sword but you know we have two vehicles right now that's running these types of power supplies just to increase the voltage because the vehicles are a pain in the butt to get the alternators correct. Um, so anyway, Tower Amps smart charger, 100 amp version, like it. Uh, definitely be using it here on the test bench. These uh, type of power supplies are also a uh, good way to go. Uh, the tall ramps looks a hell of a lot better, in my opinion. I mean, come on, man. Look. Come on, man. That's a big block. This is a nice looking. Looks like an amplifier. Nice looking power supply. This one does a really good job. Both of them are doing a good, you know, they, they did a really good job here. You've seen the results. And we'll leave it at that. Sorry for rambling. All for this one.